is the JPEG to Raw photo review show number 16, where we're going over the August uh, 2017 photos. Tonight we're joined by uh, Tim, along with AD and I, and we're going to do a little bit of a show. We're going to call it show number 201. I'm going to release this episode in both the photo review show feed and the regular JPEG to Raw feed. So I think some of the people in the regular JPEG to Raw feed have been missing out on the photo review show. And we're going to introduce them to this if they haven't seen it already. Um, so just as a little intro into the for the JPEG Raw show, I've talked in the past about it and I brought this up again. And I, I just want to give a, a little update. And that is on crash plan and my backup plan. Since we've talked, you know, there's been numerous things happening around the world that um, – Lots of bad things happen to those people, but they're talking about bringing it back just to photography and, and the storage and the backup I've been talking about. That is, you know, you think about deleting a file, losing a hard drive, all that kind of stuff. You, these things can happen to you too. If you lived in one of these places around the world where these things have happened and, mm -hmm. you, you know, you needed to have a, a, a backup plan to have that stuff stored, stored somewhere. And even if you didn't, you could have a robbery or a fire or something like that. So that offsite backup is so critical and it's what I'm still struggling with. And now that crash plan is gone. You know, I think I have a good internal backup program. I like, like AD, I run a, uh, Unraid. And I have my original and then the Unraid version. And that's worked well. But crash plan was a good, inexpensive, unlimited uh, backup source for me, at least. And I had close to 14 terabyte of storage there, which they're going to delete all of it. Because I had over five terabyte, they're going to delete everything. So one of the things that made me rethink, and this is something maybe you... If you don't have that much data, then you, you probably have a lot better options. Um, but one of the things that made me rethink is, do I really need to back up online all 14 terabyte of that? So I'm going to get a lot more critical on what I'm going to back up online. The other option is, and one of the things I'm going to do, like this podcast night, we'll produce 100 gig worth of, of data, or at least 100 gig. And that's, you know, 8 gig of my 14 terabyte, 8 terabyte of my 14 terabyte is, is the podcast stuff. So I'm just going to have buy four, my plan right now at least, buy four terabyte drives. Once I fill one up, I'll bring it into work and just and just do that. And that's stuff that if I did lose it, it's not the end of the world. And the photos and, and tax returns and some of those things are things I really want to have backed up. But, um, you know, the podcast files, I could survive if I, lo you know, easily survive if I lost a month or two of, of podcast files. So that's that's my update. So, Mike, with with the podcast files, though, don't you upload the show to Vimeo? I upload it to Vimeo, YouTube, and um, Podbean, the, the the actual physical file. But it is the edited file, and it is the you know compressed file. So the original, mm. the originals mm -hmm. is what is causing all the the large file size. You know, um, I think we'll have eighty gig worth of originals recorded tonight. So what do you record at then? What what do you uh, just 1080p or do you record? Yeah, and it's going to it's going to get a little crazy here because I'm actually recording twice the video and then a third time for the audio and two different bit rates. Uh, one bit rate I think is 75 megabit. Is that right? Okay, yeah, something like that. And that'll produce depending on how long we go. That'll produce somewhere between a 40 and 60 gig file. Mm -hmm. And then the other one would be somewhere in a 20 gig, and then the audio will be around 2 gig. I'm just wondering if my my thought is to save you a little bit uh, the possibility of uploading to a, a site like Vimeo if you have a pro account, which is unlimited, I think. Mm -hmm. And then making those backups private so no one can get them, they would be stored on their servers so that you could retrieve them, Correct. I think so. Yeah, I just... Just a thought there. The other thing, the other problem, when you produce that kind of data and then you are producing it on a regular basis, we've missed a few weeks right. here. yeah. But, you know, it's almost like your computer, especially with my upload speed, is working the entire week, the upload, before it gets around to the next week when you've got more to do. Yeah, um, I'm working with 4K files. I'm about mm -hmm. to move to 8K files. And it's wow. just simply, you know, when you start moving that amount of data when i go out and shoot it's those days around after i shoot and i'm backing up data yeah it is it is a lot of bytes moving around it is um, and a lot of tie up 
Yeah, that, that once you start shooting video with either your DSLR, your you know various cameras, your your um, drone, you can chew up yep. data really, really fast. And then you got to yep. decide, you know, do I really, really want to back that up online? Do I have the bandwidth and the storage online to do that with? So you might have to look at other options. So that's where I, if I finally decide, how, how much data? How much data is eight gigs in let's say a, a half hour? Uh, how uh, how big is that? It's going to be huge. Yeah. Eight gigs? What do you? How much data? Oh, you mean eight K? Eight, eight, yeah, eight K. Sorry. Eight, well, I wouldn't gig shoot gig. like if I, was, I know eight gigs. <laughs> yeah, if I shoot any eight K stuff, it's going to be like A B roll stuff where I'm going to end up cropping in, or most of the time, like you wouldn't shoot eight K natively. You'll shoot it in the camera, and then maybe you'll produce a four K video from the eight K video. So, right, like okay. most four K video producers are shooting in five K. And then that gives them wiggle room to actually uh, move the shot or zoom in a little bit and still have resolution at 4K. So you shoot above what you're shooting. Right, that to. makes sense. Yeah. So I shoot at 4K a lot and then I edit down to 1080p. That allows me the ability to move my shot around if I don't have it framed right or or uh, track something and not you know have all that extra wiggle room around the outside. Right. Um, but still, those raw files like Mike is talking about. Um, I have to send them over to my server. I have them on my production machine, and then, then I have to move them to offsite. And it's the offsite move that takes so long to move. Um, and right now, I'm not shooting like any podcasts or anything like that in 4K. So I don't have these hour-long shows. I can't even imagine. Although I can because I I do have a gaming channel and on the gaming channel I shoot in 3440 by 1440 which is ultra wide. It's not quite 4K, but it is ends up being about the same data at and I shoot that at 130 megabits per second. Wow. At 60 frames per second. And generally those files 60 I'll frames do a like too. Yeah. yeah. So I'll shoot like a 20 minute episode and it'll end up being roughly 25 gigs. Jeez. And then, but once I edit those, I don't keep the raw footage anymore because okay. it's just a, you know, I'm doing a playthrough or I'm doing a review of a video game and I don't really, you know, I don't need that footage after I've uh, right. produced it, you know, so, okay. but otherwise I would have to be making backups of like my stuff from my drone and all that kind of stuff. I make backups of all that and it just takes a lot of bandwidth. Yeah, so if you don't produce the kind of you know uh, large amounts of data that AD and I are doing, if you're not doing a lot of video or or stuff like that, and you're really just looking to back up photos and you're looking to back up maybe some other documents like that, and you've got I don't know, let's say five terabyte or less, there's lots of options. Uh, you still could use Crash Plan. You could go over there to Business Plan, um, mm -hmm. or you could use something like Backblaze. There's some other options. There's, there's lots of other options actually for you. To, to do stuff like that. Um, eventually, if I settle on something that works, because the thing about Crash Plan, it was automated and it just did it. Um, and I need to, something that's going to be fairly automated and just do it too. So I'll, I'll try and post something or talk about it later if I do it. Yeah, um, you're actually going to see too, just on the news front, I'm going to be talking about this over on, on my uh, the Weekly Fat podcast that I'm doing. Um, the uh, Another new thing that's coming out, and it just changed over, is Google has changed from Google Drive to Backup and Sync now. Right. They're actually um, they're actually looking to pick up on that backup market now. Um, and you can assign individual folders, individual files now to be backed up to Google Drive uh, and your storage. And I think they're thinking about actually making it a lot more affordable for everybody as well. So oh, there's something to awesome. keep, yeah. something to keep in mind there, and especially for anybody who's looking at five terabytes or under. I mean, you know, it, lots that's, of options. Yeah, right. There's a lot of options. Dropbox and uh, WeTransfer and a lot of different uh, companies out there. So, okay, so we're going to say that part was the JPA Raw Photography Podcast. Now we're going to move into <laughs> the photo review show, and we had a lot of entries this month, so so we don't go two, three hours. We're, I'm going to try and limit them. So if you, some people entered a, a photo in both our beginner and our regulars uh, group, I'm going to do my best not to pick both of your photos, you know, so you don't take up the slots, and you may not get picked this month. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have any great way of picking who's going to do it. If you're new, I'm going to try and pick your, your photo, but no guarantees there either. So um, let me 
I'm a little rusty here, so let me get this ready and see. <laughs> Mike, let me just put it out there too. Um, why don't we just head into this? Is um, and I will just keep them short and brief. We're not going to go deep tonight. Um, okay. You know, like I told you earlier, it's something I've got to practice anyway. So, so I will do my best to keep it. Yeah, and guess guess what? I, so I'm talking about I'm not, I'm rusty. I don't even have the stuff up. Hold on a second. I do. I don't know what you order I to should me? even go in. Yeah, because I try and oh. help AD with going in somewhat of an order. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. All I was right. going to say, you sent them to me, so you must have them. I do. I do have them. You can always go to the... Uh... No, I just saw him log in. He <laughs> just logged in on my screen. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm You've there been now. spied. Okay, let's see. I need to still be able to see all the chat. All right, so first up, let me find that photo. We're going to do the beginners group first. Yep. Once I find the photo. Here we go. This photo. And get rid of that. Bring that over. And the photographer for this one is Stephen Meese. I will find his name here. Good gosh, it's a long list. Here we go. <laughs> Wait, wait. I've already messed up. Hold on. There oh, we you're go. right. Nope. <laughs> there we are. You're good. No, nope, still not right. No, he doesn't want to be in the big picture. There you go. There. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> it's like the Brady Bunch around here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now everything's right. I should be back on track, everybody. <laughs> All right, the first one up is Stephen Meese, and I think this... I know. Oh, boy. <laughs> This one was actually the winner in the um, the contest over there. And let's see if I can get... It's, this is Steven's first contest entry. Uh, feedback is appreciated, he said. Uh, then he gives us his camera, which is a Canon 5D Mark II. Cool. And their theme was black and white. So you're gonna, I think all of theirs you're going to see is black and white. Oh, so, all right. Just let me put it out there that my slideshow says... The theme is open. So I, I'm like, wow, did they all coordinate? Did they all shot black and white this month? Like, that yeah. makes more sense to me now. So, Yeah, I think I did that last night. I must have Mike, copied a previous month. Oh, oh. Mike, you are getting rusty, buddy. I am getting rusty. Yeah. Oh, Mike all says right. black and white suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> suddenly. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. We're so having fun here, kids. We are. We are. <laughs> Um, I, I actually like this one. I, I actually pulled up every one of these into the Lightroom and I will tell you that I've seen a theme along, at least in the beginners where some things were underexposed and, and the trying, the, uh, histogram was all pushed to the left. This one, mm -hmm. it, you know, lends itself to a little bit, to have some underexposed areas in those trees and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but I like this one. Yeah, I don't know what order you want to go in here. It's uh, you, you, you're in command oh, there, not, Mike. You I'll can't just, see. I'll just jump in. Yeah. Um, so no, no, I meant as far as who's who's gonna oh say there. My only thing with this photo is it's quite dark in those trees that you pointed out already, and that kind of pulls your eye down into that area because you know how dark contrasts in a corner will always pull your eye away. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if he could have lighted lightened that up just a little bit and balanced the image a lot more, I think that's all I would really suggest with this image. It's it's a great moment, good uh, dramatic skies. I've taken photos like this myself, so it's uh, I I definitely could understand why you'd want to, you know, pull over or hike out here or whatever he did in order to take this shot. So, you know, I recently calibrated both of my monitors there in front of me. You know, I have a bunch, but the two main ones, I mm -hmm. calibrated them. And it's real misleading because the ones that I'm showing, I'm seeing you guys on are not calibrated. So they're brighter mm -hmm. and images look better on them. When I first reviewed this, this photo, it looked really, it looked much better and much better exposed until I brought it up to my calibrated monitor. And Correct. I would say that, you know, I don't, I don't know what everybody else is using. You never know what your viewer is using, of course, but you want to start from something, a known quality. And so right. if, if you have not um, calibrated your monitor, you know, I would highly advise doing that and getting some kind of calibrator. There are even things you can do to get it closer. 
um, online or something like that. If you're if you're pulling up your image and you think it looks properly exposed, but the histograms push one way or the other, that's a sign too that you got something going on. Yeah, and so I always I view on a calibrated monitor and calibrate these about once a month, uh, sometimes more often if they get wacky, mm -hmm. which going into different video modes can cause that to happen in your monitor too. So if you calibrate your monitor and you have somebody who plays video games on your system or sometimes uh, runs full screen video, sometimes that will mess up your color profile and you've got to reset it. So just keep that in mind. I use Calibrize when I first started, which was an online program that you could download. It's totally free and it just has a bunch of tests that you run. And Windows itself has a bunch of tests that you can run. And I know the Mac does as well. But I think, you know, like once you start getting into photography, you want to get something like a spider mm -hmm. um, uh, or an x rite a color monkey, something like that. Um, they're not that expensive. And once you learn to calibrate your monitor with them and see the difference, it's amazing. Um, it is. You know, and, and then see what we calibrate for is we're not calibrating calibrating for the world because we, we don't know what the world has for monitors. And you That's to right. think that you could do that is crazy and insane. What we calibrate for is to make sure that when you create a photo, it's within gamut. So if, if it goes to print – then you're not going to end up with spots that don't have detail in them or right. spots that are blown out. And the biggest thing that I tell people is when you're thinking about making a photo and putting it out there, uh, careful of what you wish for. I've had many people release a photo that maybe was – uh, had noise in it or something, but when you shrunk it down, it looked good. And then lo and behold, someone come along and be like, I want to buy that. Can you print it large? And they have to say no. Yeah. yeah. And and that sucks. Right. So, so yeah, when we, when I look at it for sure, I can guarantee you that I'm looking at it on a calibrated monitor. And, and that one side, um, is a, a bit, um, dark and shadowy, which is kind of cool. But then if you're going to do that, you might want to burn the left-hand side a little bit too and bring the brightness down there so it's balanced because otherwise my eye is just going to go to this right-hand corner and just I'm not getting out there into the valley. And you really want to bring people out to the valley and, and see those beautiful God rays coming down and all that. So that's all I had on that one though. Yeah, I've had all kind of things happen. My earpiece just fell out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and not only the 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 brightness and the and that thing, the the tint, the color. You know, when I first calibrated this one, it, I knew it had drifted off because I could see a blue tint to these things, and it was under calibrated. When I yep. when I first calibrated them, they the first impression was, "Wow, that's way too warm. Something's wrong." Mm -hmm. And I think I did it wrong the first time, so I had to do it again. It was a little too warm, but it will it will look different than what you're used to. But it's if if you're not Editing on a calibrated monitor, who knows what you ended up with? Yeah, that's well, the a one, um, go ahead, good thing I noticed also is that uh, the LCD monitors versus the old monitors mm -hmm. definitely hold a lot longer. I, I right. probably do my I – don't, I don't think I'm down to every month anymore. I'm probably every other month doing it and definitely holds uh, the color temperature a lot longer. And I have two monitors here and main, my left one is my main one. If I'm doing any editing, that's the one I'm going to do it on. Yeah, and Mike, you mentioned the difference in color temperature. Yeah. Keep in mind, too, that one of the things that when you start – that will drive you nuts when you start calibrating your monitor. Um, I use a program called DisplayCal because it's a, a very high-end calibration system. It's much better than what comes with the calibration unit that you – you with the uh, software that you get with the actual unit. Um, and – you can actually set the color temperature of the lights in your room, which affect what you see on the screen. Mm -hmm. So you, we take it takes a measurement for the room, or you say, well, I've got you know five thousand K lights or fifty five hundred K lights in here, and it you pick a level of light that you have in your room when you're editing, and it will match it to that. So it will change the white balance ever so slightly, and it's really weird the first time you do it because, like you said, you'll notice that things that may have looked white suddenly look like a yellow. But then after a few days of you looking at that, it looks white to you again. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like your eyes have to adjust. Your eyes adjust. And as we close out on that, Jade had asked out in Facebook chat, had asked uh, what calibrator do we use? I use the – I'm probably not going to be the – yeah, I can. I can see that. Uh -huh. The Spider 5. I have the Spider 4 still. Yeah. Me too. Oh, thank okay. you. I feel better. <laughs> it's the same one I got. Which way? I, I will tell you a trick. 
that apparently everybody else knew but me. I mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. When you put it on your monitor, and there's a, a point there where it's got to sit there for a good while, you know, minutes. Mm-hmm. And if you, yeah, well, I was sitting there holding it with my arm, and then that arm would get tired, and I'd put up the other arm and do that. Yeah, it has a little thing that goes over the top of the, the back of your monitor, with the weight. but it doesn't fit flat. It fits at, you know, at an angle. Um, and I was afraid that that angle that's sitting in would let in too, uh, too much light or wouldn't read right. Um, so like, you know, AD showing it doesn't, it's not going to fit flat. The thing to do is just tilt your monitor backwards. Hopefully it's on some kind of stand where it can tilt backwards. <laughs> you tilt it backwards and then it, the gravity will keep it holding there flat. So much easier to calibrate now. I don't have to, you know, build up stand my Stand there for two minutes. <laughs> do that. All right, let's go on to the next one. I'm going to do the, the very next one, AD, because I think this is a new person also. Okay. This one is William Alexander. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, William, if you entered before, I'm sorry, but I don't remember you entering. And um, not, no, no information really here for this one. Oh, dear. Sorry. Well, we'll tell, we'll tell, um, we'll tell him right out that num- the number one thing that you want to do, William, when you send an image in, especially for me, if we do like a full blown review show is please provide me with the information of why you took the photo, not your camera information, which is fine. You can, if, if you're unsure about your technical abilities, you can include the camera information. That's fine. But even ask questions. You're more than welcome to ask a question when you submit your photo and say, Oh, I use these settings. Do you think that's good or whatever in the beginners group? Um, but always tell me why you took the photo and why you processed it in the way that you did, because that will help me try to reach your goal. Because my opinion on your photo doesn't mean crap. My, basically, if I, what I'm trying to do for you is I'm trying to fig- get inside your head and figure out what you're trying to do, which I don't know. When I look at a photo, I have my own reasons for looking at it and liking it or disliking it. But without that information, I can't get you to your end goal. So if you say, well, I'm trying to create a dramatic picture of clouds and I thought this looked like a hole in the sky and reminded me of this movie. But then I have to be like, yeah, OK, I'm, you're right there. You're on it. Um, other than that, I have to just guess. And that that isn't going to give you the help that you need. So when you guys submit in the beginners group, especially, please tell me why you took the picture and why you processed it in the way you did. And then I can help you better. Um, and that's just on my end of it. So the rest of it's going to be opinion. So, um, you know, that's all I could give you on this particular photo. I think it's cool. I like it. That's all right. You know. <clears throat> so let's move on to let's go down to the train one. Okay. Can I use? If I skip one that you really wanted to do, you can always let me know, and I'll go back. And this is Jade Cook, who I, th- uh, I think is out there tonight. There's yes, Jade. in Facebook. Yep, out there in Facebook. Um, this is from Jade. And I will say that when I looked at this one, this one did look like it was a proper exposure in, in um, Lightroom. Yeah, I, um, and it, I don't know if you guys want to. You guys want to take a crack at these? I mean, yeah, I, I I like this picture, but I think in my mind this almost would have been better in a landscape uh, picture versus the uh, vertical because you got a lot of space at the top of this mm-hmm. where I, I would like to see more of that smoke trail going towards the back of the the train. But I I love trains anyway, so to me I, I love the shot overall because because of that. But uh, I I think in my mind. I'd like to have seen the trailing edge of the train and the smoke trail going all the way to the back of it. And I don't know if, if y'all see this. As, there's something that my eye keeps going to around the first car. It almost like a ghost of a person or something. I'm looking at mm-hmm. a smaller version of this, so maybe I'm not seeing it right. But do you see that? Yeah, now that you about? say I see something there, but I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if that's a ghost of a person or just um, what. I don't know what it could be. I, I'm currently having two things. There's two things that caught my eye <clears throat> with the image. The one is the the ghost that you're seeing, Mike, which I can't tell what it is. It almost looks like it might have been shot through a window with a reflection, but I don't know um, what that is. And then there looks to be something that was cloned out or something that was done over, with the tree right over the front light. Like, is... Oh, yeah. I, maybe I'm not seeing it Unless right. Unless that's clouds or something. I don't, I don't know. It is a it, weird effect. It looks, Jade's it out looks there. Like he might was, be able to tell us. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't yeah, the have any. the top of the tree doesn't look right. Something's. 
Yeah, I don't have any information on the actual. Um, okay, so Jade is saying that um, the landscape brought in more trees and spectators. Um, that was a poll for the power lines and electric trains. And so, Jade, uh, tell me uh, if you're out there. So you tried to remove those from the actual shot. Is that what you did? And I'll wait here for a second. I know we're like 90 seconds behind. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and I, you know, I, Jade, I would say that if you're interested, you know, sometime we can hang out. And maybe I can teach you some editing tricks for stuff like that. Power lines are a pain in the ass. They are. Um, and I will tell you a little trick. So here's a little trick for everybody. I'll give you a tidbit of information. I learned this from somebody else. Um, so when you're taking a shot like this and there, you see that there are power lines in the background, here's a little trick that you can do. Take your main shot of the train the way that you want to. Wait till the train leaves because it looks like the train was leaving. And then after the train is gone, either move your tripod up or down either way without changing the angle of the camera or anything, just the height of the tripod. Like, so you would use the center column and move it either up if you have it all the way down or down if you have it all the way up and take another photo. And then when you go home, you'll be able to easily remove those lines from the photo by overlaying the two as layers in Photoshop and just erasing one of them. Because what you do is change the angle of the wires and then it reveals the things behind it, which gives you those patches to be able to take the wires out cleanly. Huh. That's that a really a great little tip. I yeah, never tip. Have even thought of it. And it's a fun little thing that you can do, but you have to be on a tripod, obviously, and just change your height. That's all you do. Don't, you know, don't angle your camera. Don't do anything like that. Just the height is all you need to do. Gary and Jordan also said they would like to have seen this uh, from a lower angle because it looks like maybe he's standing on a platform. Yeah, for me, it, of course, a lower angle. My, if it's a moving train, you got to be careful there too. Yeah, for me, the main <laughs> thing, right? The main thing for me was just the fact of that the train is coming through the middle of the frame, and I really would have liked to seen it in the lower half with all of that dramatic sky and stuff up above, mm -hmm. um, or you know, have the train up higher. But I don't, I don't think it works with the train up no, higher. I think the train's got to be below. Got to yeah. be low. So yeah, I would have put it lower in the frame in the lower third uh, with the front of the train or the. The engine of the train itself should have kind of been cutting right through the thirds of the image where it's right in the center right now. So, All right. Uh, hey, and hey, here's a tip for you guys. If you're out in chat, I'm going to do my best to make sure I pick your photo. Oh, there you go. There you go. So uh, Kristen is out there, and we're going to pick uh, her photo here, which is of uh, maybe it's her child. I, I don't know, but uh, of a baby. Let me find her name so I can put it up. Kristen Lee Anderson. Cool. And I was, uh, her, let's see, my, it is her son. Her son's first sink bath at the beginning of this month is eight years old and absolutely loves sink baths. And I, I remember when she posted it, I commented that I liked giving my kids sink baths because it meant I didn't have to get on my knees to give them a bath, <laughs> a, a, you know, a bath in the tub. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so with that, um, so I like the moment here. I think one of the things, Kristen, is that that bright, bright light off on the on the window off the right is it really draws me away with with that photo. I'm looking over here because that's where my my photo is. Um, so I don't know if you could have pulled that curtain in or done something to have made that a little less bright um, there. But yeah, I. Did I say eight years old? I meant eight months old. She's correcting me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely not eight years old. He's eight months old. Um, to me, that would that's the biggest distraction in this in this photo. Uh, if you could, I would have maybe by doing that, your exposure would have brightened his eyes a little bit too. That's yeah, I I think that close up, um, the backlighting backlighting's a tricky thing. So. Um, I kind of get what you're going for here, the real natural kind of look. For me, the the uh, plant coming out of the the head is the one that that is you know immediate for beginners. Always be careful of what's behind your subject. Um, so I'm for me, I think you could, still could have gotten the story of the shot, which would have been um, the sink, right, and and the bubbles and stuff. I love all of that part of the image, and it's a sweet image. I mean, this is a moment for you. Um, so there's no, there's no going to be making this photo any better for you. That's, uh, um, you know, that's a given. 
Uh, but I think as far as like maybe an artistic shot or something like that, moving to your right and a little closer in um, and, and getting him to look more towards you, uh, taking the sink and the water purifier out of it um, and using that backlight as kind of a, a dramatic side shadow light. And, and, and when you turn his head, the light would have lit up the pupils of his eye over on the one side. And that really would have had the glimmer uh, in the eye kind of effect there. And a lot of times when we do these straight on shots, they're, they're kind of what I always have called a matter of fact shot. So it's like straight on and it's just like, it's like a documentary shot, you know? Um, and so if you wanted to add a little bit of creativeness to it, a little bit of art artistic, I think I would have gone more with a portrait, um, uh, you know, orientation of the camera and closer up and then over to the right and not made it so squared up to the sink. And those just try that. You know, I'm sure there's going to be more sink sink baths. Oh, if yeah. he's smart, he'll keep taking them till he's eight. Because <laughs> you know, don't at some point it gets to, awkward. One, right. Well, when you have to do all this stuff for yourself as an adult, <laughs> I don't know if I'm speaking directly to your child or not. But if I knew now what uh, you know, I should have known. Like then, shaving. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, would have. Really. I would have never grown up. I'd be like, no, do it for me. Somebody well, do it for me. One more thing I'll add. This is this is my AD voice coming in. Is it wow. does have a little bit. It is leaning a little bit to the right, and I don't know if that is the, the lean to the right or the angle of the camera, but it. And I know, you know, AD gives us these these pointers, and you go, how could I ever get that perfect in camera? Well, you often can't, I mean, you know, maybe AD can, I know I can't, but that's why we have, we do some of these things in post is to just, it, you're not that far off uh, with, with that. It just a little bit would have leveled it off. Well, and this is her son in a bubble bath in the sink. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a win, win, win situation right, for right. her. Um, you know, uh, I think if you're, uh, if you want to become a portrait, you know, <laughs> an infant portrait photographer, and you're going to use your son is like, this is my portfolio, then start thinking about those, you know, and she yeah. said, I saw her in chat, she said she did take some shots from the right, but she didn't like them as much. And I'm just give, basically giving you ideas, Kristen, so that you, you'll you experiment with maybe changing the camera orientation or thinking about the light in his eyes and things like that. And those, you'll come up with stuff that's way better than what I'm suggesting, because you're there. <laughs> um, so this, the whole idea is just you know, give you that little creative nudge. So and Mike, I, Mike, I see what you're saying with the, the front is kind of yeah. leaning down towards the right. But if you look at it, the, the windowsill I know, is actually Nancy going just corrected. Nancy just corrected me with that too. Um, so they say it's if a anything, 1923 it's house. Slightly up. Yeah. Right. She says it's a 1923 house. So as I look around, what is <laughs> off on the, too. what is off on the countertop may not be the same off on the windowsill. You're right. right the windowsill is, then you got to get, even more creative if you want that and because there is an angle where they'll both match. You just have to find it. Yeah. Um, and I could put this in Lightroom and straighten it in two seconds and have it perfectly level on both of them. And that could the, be that it's not, it's no. not this way level. It's more mm -hmm. this way, right? Right. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the level that's changing the two. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, that's, you know, that's for me in the shot, it's here, neither here nor there. I would try different angles. I think uh, the matter of fact shot here, doesn't really suit this. Like if I'm shooting a train yeah. or a billboard or, or something where I want you to look at just the design of something and take it in as a whole, but we have a subject here. So I don't want that, the framing to compete with that unless it's framing the subject yeah. uh, better. So, I mean, getting closer in would have removed the black line from the bottom underneath the counter. And then probably would have been maybe a non-issue um, with the being unlevel because she would have moved forward and then just leveled the, the, um, the window pane behind him. And, and, you know, yeah. so yeah, just some thoughts there for trying different things. Keep going. I mean, you've got a wonderful oh, subject. She's, she's and, got a great eye. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, Absolutely. definitely, you know, Gary says this is a, uh, definitely a keeper. Yeah. And yes. a lot of these things we're talking about things you, you're going to be very difficult to perfect in the shot. You're going to right. have to do it after the fact So with that. All right, let's move yep. on to the next one. Let's, how many have we done in the beginner so far? Let's let's rip three, three, one, let's, two, uh, three. I think Nancy's out there. Four. So let's do, let's do Nancy's and then we'll do one more in the beginners and move on. Uh, I don't have names past a, so you're talking about the spider web. Yeah. Nancy's a spider web. You don't have oh, a I, name there. Oh, eight, nine. No, no names. Huh? Mike. I don't know what's with you. Yeah, it's, it's beneath uh, the photo. There's a, uh, this is almost like PowerPoint, so. Yeah, I got names on all mine. Well, I got a name on eight, 
that was a uh, watermark. No, no, the beneath it's not actually in the picture. The name it's uh, beneath oh, it was a long. Oh, I don't have that little thing anymore. Where'd it go? No, I don't have a little box with any information in it at all. What? So I do on Anders. Anders. I do on Anders. Photo. Okay, hold on. Oh, I'm... there it is. Now it's there appeared. Hold on. <laughs> And Nancy, What's going on? There we go. There's Nancy. So this is Nancy. <laughs> Zoom back. Hopefully I'm saying your name Smith. right. Smith. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, we're going to see one of these later. I do not like spiders. <laughs> they freak me out. Um, <laughs> when, we'll talk about this in the post show. If I'm coming home from my walk and it's starting to get dark, the, I do not want to run into something that feels like a spider web because I'll never be able to see where it's at. But spider webs themselves are kind of, you know, they're, I like them. They're good looking. I like, especially when they have the do and the image like th that Nancy like has this here. one right here. Yeah, I, I like the the design and the work that went into that. And there's something to for me that's artistic about a spider web. And what I always think is amazing with that uh, is how quickly that built. You come out one day, there's nothing there. The next day, yeah. you have something like this. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, I, I like this. It's the focus is completely on the spider web behind it is blurred out. So it's got a very shallow depth of field. Yet the whole spider web looks to be in focus. Maybe the the left hand lower yeah, is well, just yeah. slightly out. But uh, I, I like that. The the only the the comment for me would be this um white blob in the upper left hand corner that's that is distracting away from it. I know when you're there, I don't know how you would have dealt with that. And if you try to do too much of it in post. You can really damage the image and make it look even worse. So I'm interested to see what AD is going to say, how we could have, what we could have done here. Well, I think that as far as post goes, I'm not really sure what you could do uh, there other than change the crop. Um, and, and immediately, the very first thing I would do is change the crop. For me, it's a targeted shop, so, shot. So you know how we talked earlier about a matter of fact shot? Um, if you're going to do a target like this and put the center of the web in the center of the photo, then shoot it straight on so that it's got that or get close enough so that the web becomes more of an abstract so that we kind of get uh, this shallow depth of field in our face and shallow depth of field far away. And then we have that really tight focus right in the center, which gives us that kind of zoom in, zoom out kind of look. If you look at Don Kamarechka's work and you look at some of his photos that he does the ultra close macro work where he uses that um, that type of focus uh, trick where it's out of focus in front of you and out of focus, like almost like a tilt shift, mm -hmm. um, it really lends a lot of drama uh, to the shot. And and I agree with you, Mike, the, the it's a distracting having the blown out part up there. To me, the, the triangle in the corner where her name is at too, is distracting to me, the missing uh, web that's not connected down there. I think that if this was closer in uh, and you put maybe the target of the web uh, in the upper uh, right or upper left. I, or, yeah, I actually went with my hand up there to the upper left and right. uh, it actually looks it looks good that way too. Yeah, I would suggest to Nancy play with the crop a little bit and try even try a one to one square crop, and just move it around. What I like to do is make virtual copies of this in Lightroom, mm -hmm. and I'll just try different crops and then put them up full screen with no distractions and just see which one really grabs you. One of them you'll stay on a lot longer than all the other ones, and that's the one uh, when you're first trying to figure all that stuff out. It's, that's usually the easiest way for me to figure out if the crop is working. Or not. And she says it was a pure white flower behind her. So yeah, it's going to be hard not to. It blow sure it out. was. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. One more in the beginners group, and this one is going to be the, that last one there. There from Jay Purcell. Purcell. Uh, Purcell. Jay Purcell, and he's he he can't watch the show tonight. Jay's from England. He's a good friend of mine. He's my huh. gaming buddy. Um, we we uh, play video games in co op together, and we make these little videos of us playing games and he's from england and i'm from america so we have the whole you know bloke uh murka <laughs> stuff going on when we're playing which we have fun with and jay is um he's kind of uh he wants to learn to be better at his photography and i told him i said you should submit something and this is his dog yeah i know way too much about, uh, Sleeping uh, about beauty. <laughs> this is poppy um his dog his poppy is a is a world renowned star on YouTube, by the way. Um, he does these things called dog watch 
<laughs> like Overwatch, but it's dog watch, and he takes his dog for a walk and films it, and like thousands of people watch this wow. these videos and <laughs> and love Poppy. Um, and Poppy will usually show up when we're playing video games and snore the entire time uh, <laughs> while we're playing. So we'll be playing, and Jay's mic will be going. <laughs> Uh, constantly while we're playing. It's hilarious. But um, so Jay wanted to submit something and he put this in the group at first and a few people had some comments. I actually, I, I kind of love this photo. Um, I think for Jay, I would probably make this a square shot and just make it all about the dog, take mm -hmm. the window and the stuff behind out. I know he's not watching, but he will pick up on this one when it's uh, broadcast. <laughs> um, but I, I just thought this was adorable and he has such a creative mind mm -hmm. Um, he's such a creative guy that, uh, it's just one of those things where, um, I've said this before, uh, photography or anything in life is 90% competence and 10% talent. And if I'm pretty sure most of us have more than 10% talent. And so the, all you got to do is build your confidence to be a winner at what you're doing. And so it, that's the hardest part for a lot of people is just being confident and showing their work and, and getting out there. And he's doing that now, which I think is right. totally awesome. And I, uh, yeah. I would tell you when I was, when I was picking the winner for this month, I stuck on this one for a while and I kept going back to it. And I went to actually, I went through several of them. Um, the spider web was another one. And, you know, as I went through them, it was very, it was very difficult for me to, to, to pick. And ultimately with this one, I keep getting drawn to the dog. I, you know, you, you're so upfront and and there you keep getting drawn to it. The the heavy lean to the window in the back, just <laughs> what what are you? What's happening here? That's not. Is that a pug? Poppy yeah. Poppy lives. Oh, in almost looks exactly. Oh, there you go. I was gonna say looks. It's got the same exact <laughs> face. Yes, we we we've modeled Poppy. So this is for Jay. And I'm building. I'm going to be painting this and sending it over to him. So we finally got Poppy uh, awesome. ma made into a real deal. So she's going to have her own. Well, who's got the nice laser scanner? He, <laughs> Ad, he, you got to watch his uh, YouTube channel. He's and you can see back in the background, he's making some kind of. Um, I don't know what that is. The thing back there, and that's in your cage that you're printing right now. Oh, oh, that's my new light. That's my new rocket light that I'm putting together. That's yeah. uh, to pay homage to Rocket Man in North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going to send that over to him. <laughs> that's incredible. Um, so I don't know, you know, if you're if ever a lean is is okay, but to me that uh, I I kept getting drawn off to that lean is is too, so much. But then the other thing was I, I would like to see a little bit more exposure in the in the dog. Um, yeah, that was the one. Uh, I think that was the one um, thing that he that he was, uh, and I think his camera was probably thrown off by the bright window yeah. right behind. And so yeah, he was. Um, that was the one criticism uh, critique that he got when he posted it to the group. I, I can't remember who it was. It might have been Jade or somebody. Uh, you know, had said that uh, a little bit, and he didn't understand. Like he doesn't even understand like what that means. Yeah. So. We've got a ways to go with Jay, um, but he definitely has an eye for uh, that. And that's why I thought maybe cropping it in a little bit yeah. would get rid of the bright window. And maybe then it seems a little brighter. I don't know. I haven't played with the photo at all. I just was really super happy to see him submit something uh, to the show. So well, That's our last one in this group. But I will say, Jay and anybody else that's in the beginner group, I want you to feel comfortable to Post in there, ask questions. In that yep. group, we should not be criticizing anybody. We shouldn't be doing this anywhere. We should all be trying to help each other. But especially in that right. group, we're, we're all be beginners or we're there to help beginners. Um, so I you, you know, want you to feel comfortable posting this and what do you think of this? Um, what did I do right here? What did I do wrong here? And, and post as often as you want, asking questions you want. So thanks for, for join, uh, joining and entering the contest. Do it again next month. We'd love to see more images from you because mm -hmm. you definitely have an eye. There's, I mean, I keep getting drawn to this image <laughs> and a few, a few tweaks here would have made it, uh, a real difference there. All right. Now let's go on over to the regulars group. And I don't think this guy has ever entered with the very first image there, AD. I don't think he's ever entered. Carl, he's been in a group for Carl a long time and he's, he takes some fantastic photos, and I think this is his first time entering, so I'm going to go ahead and do Carl. Awesome. I love this picture. Find Carl's name. 
You should see the list of names I have here. It's way there we go. Talk about go. shallow depth of field. Yeah, I think this is a perfect example of what I meant in the um, the spider web shot. And, and you know, if you would have had the center of the spider web kind of be like the center of the flower here, I right. think that that's very dramatic and very well done. And you notice, like again, making a good photo that. Um, even though there are dark spots in this photo, they kind of surround and lead you to the center of that flower surrounded by color. They don't draw you away. It kind of does the exact opposite. And that's because they're balanced around the frame nicely. They're not just in one corner. It's not just a dark corner. Um, so the way he framed this, he put it in the thirds. I mean, it's a very basic shot, but in that it's a very professional shot as well. Well done. Um, I really don't have anything uh, good colors uh, it's not blown out. Um, it's, you know, just it shows that, that I'm I'm glad to see it said that he's had some health issues and hasn't been able to get out. I'm mm -hmm. glad to see that he was able to get out and get this. And I hope that continues for him because, yeah, he's definitely uh, definitely knows what he's doing. I mean, I don't I don't know with a lot of these images, to be honest with you, Mike, why I'm critiquing like anybody, uh, you know, in the regular <laughs> group, because they they all seem to have a good handle. And I hope they find some sort of inspiration or something from. Well, My silly you, words. And if you, Carl, his landscape shots are just fantastic. So he posts every now and then in the group. I don't know if you've cool. ever seen any of his, but they're, they're mm -hmm. just fantastic. Um, I'm going to skip down and we're going to do uh, Ebenezer here. Who? Eben, Ebenezer? Did I say, did just I say the name right? Photo number four. Uh -huh. Aha. Eben oh, look at that right up. Wow. That is a long <laughs> write up. So there, there you go. I think we can get what's going on here is that um, uh, seafood, not seafood, traditional food shop in India, I think. Yeah. And I, I like the the colors in here. I like, uh, you know, there is some distortion with the wide angle happening um, and the action is happening in the photo. I think it went with a, show, a slower shutter speed because you can, you can see some movement even in the people. Yeah, I don't know um, what the you – know, I was just looking. I'm trying to read through just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, it doesn't say what the settings were, so I really don't know. Um, for me, an excellent job, though, using a wide-angle lens. It probably looks like he was shooting – man, had to be somewhere in the – I would imagine 12 to 15 millimeters, somewhere in there. Maybe 20, but I don't know. It's a little little – wide for a 20 but even so very difficult one of the number one rules in shooting people is stay away from wide angle lenses especially if you're not like right at body midsection because it can really distort people in weird ways now you might be looking to make a a very twisted distorted image and that's fine and use a wide angle lens for that for sure but i think he did an excellent job here keeping pretty much that reined in there isn't as much distortion as I've seen from an image this wide to be right. able to capture this much uh, information. And uh, it's just a, a great look uh, at a street vendor in a, in a different country, which I really enjoy. Um, I really feel like I'm transported there. I really feel like I'm sitting there yeah. or standing there. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not in some place in New York city or, you know, <laughs> in Chinatown or any other, you know, place that this may take place in the States. I feel like, I'm in India here, and he did that with the writing and, and stuff, showing the sign in the background. And from his explanation, he did a great job of just letting me know what he was uh, bringing in this uh, photo, which was the illustration of customers waiting their turn in lines. And that's clear here. Um, I like it a lot, and this obviously was taken in very low light. Um, so that's cool, too. I don't think a flash was used here. I don't see any projected no. shadows anywhere so excellent job all the way around he was using a nikon camera of some sorts yeah. i don't know what it was but no i really like this image a lot um it's just a really good flavor of indian street cooking and and yeah pretty cool uh, I, think, I wonder how much of it he uh he adjusted for the the pull from uh, the wide angle lens because you look at the very top of the picture the the triangular pattern Mm -hmm. or diamond pattern doesn't look stretched at all, which is surprising. You would have thought it would. Yeah. And Adobe does a pretty good job if he's using that to, uh, 
to fix a lot of those lens corrections, especially if it was like a fisheye or a wide. I, I had a diagonal fish fisheye for a while, and Adobe had a profile fixer that straightened the photo. It, I mean, I would use it for shooting real estate, and I could go in and shoot the photo, and in my camera, I mean, it looked like, you know, the Joker's <laughs> clown house. But then I'd, <laughs> I'd go home, and the minute I plugged it into Lightroom, the profile that they had straightened every line perfectly. Hmm. So I don't know whether or not he got away with that or not, um, without knowing the equipment, it doesn't doesn't really matter. I think in the in the long run, just an excellent job. I think for others to learn from it, it would be nice to know that information, right? Um, because, or, or how he pulled it off, because it does look um, it does look like it was shot at it at, at chest level, which is what you want to do if you're using a wide angle lens and you don't want to distort people's bodies to make them look like bowling pins or you know big heads. Um, you basically want to keep that camera like right in the mid range. So I think he did well by being at the table level there, the, the grill level, um, you know, and the only, probably the only criticism that I would have for him is just be careful of things like the, the writing on the guy's, uh, belt there. It looks like it says scar or something. Yeah. I kind of probably would have edited that out. And then this, the other part of the grill here, that's kind of a diagonal line in the lower left-hand corner. Um, that kind of is a little bit of a distraction when you have that, uh, that dark triangle again in the corners of your image. So maybe cropping this up just a little bit and making it a little bit more wide. So it's more like an Epic shot since it is wide right. to begin with may have uh, removed that distraction, brought us a little closer to the grill in the action. But other than that, I mean, an excellent job uh, in taking a, a wide angle shot like this and making it still look pretty darn natural. So especially for the guy uh, who's in the apron there, he he's, uh, you know, he looks well proportioned, doesn't look like he's stretched out too much. And, and yeah, yeah, I agree with Tim on the, the ceiling as well. All right. Very good. Uh, this next one, I'm going to go down to the one, uh, the pier with Jeff. And this, oh, okay. we see lots of pier shots. I've seen lots of pier shots. Mm -hmm. I like, the, I like the pier shots. This one's edited different than I've seen before. And I wanted to, I wanted to get your take on um, on this. This is from Jeff Schwartz. Is that right? Yes. Yep. I, I'm reframing from making a Spaceballs the movie comment about that. <laughs> it's actually shart, it's Shartz. There's Shartz. no W. Okay. There you go. So now I don't even have to go, reframe. So you can't make so that. Spaceballs <laughs> is gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a... Um, a totally different edit that they've applied to this. It, it does look like he's got the, what do you call that? He's got it lined up right. Uh, uh, it's escaping me now, the term that you tell us all the time, AD. Symmetry? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I know this peer, and it's um, I've seen this from other uh, of students of mine who brought this in. This is a very difficult place to shoot simply because the peer, uh, the, the pylons are not perfectly straight. So it's it's difficult unless you were to walk way out into the water um, in, in order to get the ones that are straight, which are the ones that are farther out. But these ones that are closer do have a little bit of a lean to them. This is the same thing that can happen, though, with any wide angle lens. If you don't have a wide angle lens leveled exactly perfectly, you will get these, uh, you know, the pier legs are are kind of splayed out at the mm -hmm. top. Um, you can use Lightroom has wonderful adjustments now um, in, in vertical uprights where you just draw a line along that and it'll straighten that right out like nobody's business. And when you look at the end of this pier, though, you can see the end of the pier is perfectly level and perfectly symmetrical. But the two pylons that are right in our face and the ones after that are a little bit better. They are not. And so you would have to use this tool in order to first straighten those two and then make sure that your uh, symmetry stayed uh, true at the end. And that's the one thing. Symmetry is symmetrical or it's not. So if you're going to take a symmetrical shot, you better make sure it's perfect. And it's one of the hardest things to do with a wide angle lens out in the field, out of the camera. So if you want to practice something to be really amazing at, that's you can go out. It drives me nuts when I'm out there. So I take the shot, I go home and I'm, I've learned to fix it in post because I, I be in my camera for hours just trying to get every line to line up with all the adjustment, the little, you know, they have the diagonal lines in the, in the viewfinder in most cameras, um, that you can line up with, but it, mm -hmm. it is frustrating. And a lot of times we're not, we don't like, we don't have the time with the light 
You know, the light is only right. right for just a few minutes. So I've just learned that it's more important to get the light and get the mood. And then if I've got to straighten something, I can do it when I get Most. when I get at home if I have to. Yeah. Um, because I know the intention while I'm out there is to get it level. And if he was shooting from sand here, there's a good chance that that'll drive you nuts too because you'll set your tripod, you'll get everything right, and then you'll go to click the camera and, the, and your tripod will have sunk a little bit in the mm -hmm. sand. And, and so then you're all back to this, you know, and here it is that if he had a front tripod leg out, it probably sunk down a little bit and your camera's pointing downwards. So, um, that can happen. Um, but I read in the description, it just said that, um, he settled, uh, for the perspective shot. I, I think it's a cool shot. It's a shot that, you know, I think everybody needs to take and, and learn to get good at. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't think settling is the right word there. I think that, yeah, that might've been, you know, you didn't get the light. That happens 90% of the time, especially if you're trying to plan for light. Um, most of the time when, when I've had amazing light, when, uh, we, when we just took that trip out to, uh, Yellowstone, we had seven days and the light was crap. Every single day that we went out to get a sunrise, there was nothing, absolutely nothing. We're driving home at the end of the evening, uh, to go to dinner. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, the, the light rays over the grand Teton mountain range just went ballistic. And that was it. We had to run off the side of the road, get all the camera out really fast. And we had a half an hour of this wonderful light display, but we couldn't have planned it because we had planned it all week long and it mm -hmm. didn't happen. Um, it just would not break for us. So 90% of the time, um, you're not going to get what you want. And, it, and it's the better photographers that go out and learn to adapt to the situation and make the most of what's there who come home with the better shots. Um, so once in a while, we'll get lucky with the great light, and that's awesome. But when we don't, take a shot like this. And 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 I like the processing here; it's different. Kind of looks like yeah. a cross. Yeah, it looks like a cross process. I kind of dig that. I think the only thing lacking here is just if you're going to go symmetrical, you've really got to straighten these lines and learn how to do that. And and um, you could have done it in post. So yeah. All right, we can, we'll be running out of time here, but I got several more I want to do. So let's let's do this next one from. Kathy Baxley, because uh, I think she's new. I don't remember seeing her name before. You know, let me find Kathy's name. Kathy Sutton Baxley. It's too bad Kathy's these, creative. Yep. Too bad That's they what don't I put these things in. Uh, I love the colors order. of this. Yes, me too. There we go. Kathy Sutton. Uh, I think the only distracting part on this is uh, that I'm guessing that's a crane um, to the left of the bridge. Is it a boat? It's a sailboat. There's a sailboat, a, a sailboat sail in the water. Yep. Looks like a sailboat or a buoy, one of the two. I think it's a sailboat that's uh, low tide. Yeah, that, that's what it looks like to me. Like it's, uh, yep. uh, you know, washed ashore or something like that, hit ground. Hit ground. Mm -hmm. Not there. It is from Panama City, so I don't know what time frame this was taken. Yeah, it's a um, wonderfully taken shot. Um, Kathy, I will tell you that your crop marks on the lower left and upper right are showing. Mm -hmm. So um, you did, obviously, you tilted the frame in order to level it. So you're definitely paying attention to the show in that department. Make sure that your auto crop is turned on so that you don't have those lines show up because they're um, – and if you, if you need to keep the frame, if you need to keep all of that information in the frame when you do that, you can use um, – if you're in Photoshop, you can use content-aware oh. fill, and it will fill yeah. those in nice and quick for you. I've done that many times myself. Um, I love the colors. Like Tim says, it's, it's, um, it's a little strange to me. It's kind of vin heavy vignetted. Uh, I don't know if you guys see this or not, um, and I don't know if it's the lights from the cars – but it looks like there's a glow of light right around the center of the photo to me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's, yeah. you know, this is one of those things. These bridges are beautiful. Um, I, we've been to several of them up and down um, through the Carolinas. There's a couple in uh, Delaware. There's a couple of beautiful bridges um, down there along Dewey Beach and in that area that I've taken photos of. And they're very difficult to get the right angle. Um, and I think this is one of those go back and try different angles. Um, there's a lot going on here with all the wires. I, I don't understand these people who put wires in our beautiful photos, but they yeah, do it all the that? time. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, things like that, try to find an angle that's, um, that's 
you know, kind of got some sort of different interest. You've got the, the light poles that are kind of glowing in the background. Um, an image like this is very difficult to, uh, to take the beauty that's there that they give you and then be able to find the, cause we can't obviously, you know, unless we're out on a boat or something, we can't get any angle that we want. We're mm -hmm. restricted to the shore. I think I would have liked to see more of the cars, um, going over the bridge. I love the light trails from them. I think there's some interest there. And the bridge is right pretty much almost dead center. And I would highly suggest that if you actually crop this image from the top down and from the bottom up a little bit, if you're going to keep the bridge in the center, you try to make that reflective symmetry thing go on where you have equal amounts of top and bottom. But when you do that, you're going to want to make it an ultra wide shot. So you're going to make it more panoramic. And bridges are a great subject for ultra wide shots where we we – move from the 16 by nine crop and, and go even more cinematic, uh, than you are here. So yeah, just a suggestion, but it's a beautiful capture. Um, well exposed, great nighttime photography. There's no, you know, the technical sides of, of the production are very well done. So awesome. Kathy, keep, uh, submitting there. Absolutely. And this next one, I think there's another new person. I love this photo. Uh, let me pull it up from Carlos La. Larera or Larera? Larera. Carlos, let me find your name. Here we go. I love the colors in here, the butterfly, the fact that it's it's at an it's you know uh, sideways versus you know flat whatever it's, it's vertical rather than horizontal. The the butterfly. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with Mike. Uh, there's nothing would, that I don't like about it. I was, you know, as as good as the photo. And then you, see you got all those sunflowers on the bottom. Is really, it, it really CD? brings. Huh? <laughs> Did I say CD? No, 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 no. I was just replying to Gary. He's oh. he's uh, got a whole stream of stuff going on there. He has a great idea. We, we were talking about the sand shot, and Gary said, "Take a CD with you and put it under your tripod oh, yeah. lag. That's it, a good idea. It makes it so it doesn't sing." I said, "What's a CD?" You probably have lots of them. Blank a, ones I'm just iPod, kidding. I have a CD it. right here. Well, you, you know how Jeez. things work. Whenever you, you CDs were writable CDs were expensive. You didn't buy that many, and then they got cheaper. You started buying a whole bunch of them, and toward the end of the life of them, you probably ended up with a whole stack of writable CDs you'll never use. There you go. I have a whole room. If anybody out there needs CDs, you let me know. I probably can send you a thousand of them and still not even put a dent in them. It's like the biggest waste product I think ever. And, and Gary world. just found a use for them. There um, you go. He did. <laughs> just said, a regular CD. Said. So Carlos says, uh, visit a sunflower field last week. And though every single shot was nice, that's good. I, I'm not that good. A butterfly came, <laughs> came at... The right moment, but wasn't able to quickly change the lens and work with the zoom lens. The only way to show the beauty of the butterfly is cropping the image. I think he did a decent job of cropping it. Yeah. The I butterfly, like I, you know, the body itself was a little bit out of focus there. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. It's a moth. Let's start there. I, moth, I get, I get crazy. I get crazy with this stuff. <laughs> People calling flies, bees, and oh. It's not now, a spider, you know, the, which is what we're going to see later. If Don Kamarutka was on the show, <laughs> he, he would lecture would be me. I know. This. Go ahead and lecture me. That's fine. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. No, but it's it's a moth. I think it's cool. Um, so it's I like the fact that it's looking out towards the sunflowers, and I was trying. You know, I got it. There was a sun. I think I'd like to see it at a less shallow depth of field, um, so that I could get a little bit more of the sunflower shape or at least have them in the screen a little bit more because the angle's really cool. Um, it, and it, all I can think of is the, the, the moth is like, Oh man, there's a whole field over there. I got one all to myself sort of thing. Right. Yeah. So I got a story out of that. Um, but he's kind of close to the center of the image. If he moved the, if, if he just changed this a little bit and could see a little bit more of the sunflowers on the bottom, and move the butterfly in the frame up a little bit more. I think that the story is kind of better shared that way. Maybe made the sunflowers and the sky like share that, you know, you know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm wondering because you're reaching the edge of the sunflower at the bottom there. You see yeah. that it, when you raise it up, you know, what are you losing something there? Because now you, 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 you've got space underneath the sunflower where the sunflower now goes all the way down to the bottom of the screen. 
But yeah, you, but if he it, all he had to do was was raise the camera up a little bit. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and he can keep that perspective of the you know the edge of the he could make the sunflower wherever he wants. I yeah. mean, yeah, okay. I, I that's just nitpicky. I think it's a unique uh, photo. I see all sorts of. You know, I had a couple of, of sunflower fields when I was out in South Dakota and um, it, you know, there's not much you can do with them. It's a sunflower field. I mean, you're going to put the sunflowers in the bottom. You're going to get close up shots. You're going to get, you know, all sunflowers. You can highlight one or two of them. But this is a unique shot that that is different from what you normally see out of a sunflower field. So that's a win in, yeah. in that. The other stuff is just nitpicky uh, opinion stuff that we always have. So. Yeah, we're going, excellent shot. Because we're running out of time, we're going to do two more. And I, like I mentioned, if we picked one of yours in, in the beginner group, I'm, not, I'm going to not pick one over here so we can do some others. And this is one that it was our winner. Um, I, you know, it's it's a great photo. Dean does great photos, but it is of a spider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Problem, Mike. I, I'm not, Reminds me of the Harry spiders Potter movie. Spiders freak me out, and this, and you make them big like especially this. like this one, yeah. But he, you know, to Dean's credit, I mean, he did, I think he did a great job with the photo. I think, um, I think you need to take uh, part. Uh, my buddy, nope. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> I had this friend, of, uh, this friend of mine, who moved out to New Mexico, and went, and this was twenty years ago. And when he moved out there, uh, he went to these. Um, he went to one of the reservations. And they had these um, basically face your fears things. And his fear was spiders. Mm -hmm. So they had him go to a cave and he stayed two nights in a cave with tarantulas. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> and he, he, yeah. he couldn't take anything with him. He just had a basic, very basic stuff. And now he just he doesn't fear spiders anymore. I would <laughs> so. need a flamethrower. <laughs> you remember the show Fear Factor? Yeah. Yep. I always knew that you, if I ever wanted that show, you can tap me out like that because all you got to do is bring in spiders and I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I anyway. think uh, I've seen a lot of Dean's work and, and you know, uh, he doesn't need any stroking from me or anybody. I, I think he does a great job. And this has got a good story behind it, um, which is, you know, again, uh, stories are always great for a blog or something like that. But we like to see images uh, stand on their own. Um, so it's well taken and I love the depth of field. I know you don't like it, Mike, but anything about it, but, uh, other than, <laughs> well, it's a good, it's a good photo. Look, I'll give yeah, them yeah, that. It's, yeah. It's excellent. I love the yeah. do on the, the, the web and, and all of that. I, I wonder if it could be, you know, um, it's, it's kind of in the middle. I can't, cause I have a black screen around it. I can't really see, where it's framed out. Oh, there I can click on it. So it's a traditional crop mm -hmm. and he does have the spider off to the side a little bit. So framed up, that's going to look pretty cool as well. So yeah, nice work all the way around. Very good. And that was our winner. Uh, okay. We're going to do one more because we've already gone over the hour and AD has got, Oh no, got stuff to do. Oh no. Um, I'm going to be up all night working on video. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> playing with my new video toy. So it's all good. All right, so the last one we're going to do is, because I thought it was kind of unique, is this one from Amber Salat? Yeah. Salat? Um, yeah, she is one in the past, and she uh, took this. Let me find her name, and then I'll come back to it. There we go. There we go. This is actually, uh, I'll read it. I took this earlier this month, but was hoping to do something better to submit. Uh, this is a McFarlane mini scene of the Walking Dead, Daryl, motorcycle, and zombie. This was shot more for the editing. I used a speed light to set up behind to make a uh, composite easier. I used, speed, I used a speed light in front, but not very strong and a positive and not positive it fired. <laughs> and then she put it before after actually in, the, in her comments there. So this is actually, I guess, a little model. Yeah. Um, and I, I, lo I love it. Um, I love the creativity I know Amber's had stuff on before and she obviously has listened to what we've said about having fun with this kind of stuff. Um, I don't, I have to ask Amber cause I think she's won the Lightroom preset pack 
did you use my walking zombies preset? I mean, <laughs> it's they're there for you. No. Um, but yeah, it's got those colors from, if you ever watch the walking dead, they have a specific palette that they use mm -hmm. in the show. And that's what my preset was designed around so that I could recreate, um, that type of look. But I love this. I think this is, uh, this would be my winner if I was to pick out of all the shots, uh, this month, this one stood out as something different, someone trying something different. I want to give people too the other idea is if you have a, a big screen TV in your house, most of them today will take a USB stick. Um, if you want to experiment, especially through the winter months with fun stuff, load up photos like this, use shallow depth of field, like a, a wide open aperture and try some of this stuff and set up your stuff in front of the TV screen and take the photo. You can have any photo you want in the background. You can have a sunset, you can have an old city, you can, you know, whatever. Um, and, and you can play around with that sort of thing. Um, if you're in the group, Michael Demigal has been having a blast with just around the house stuff and been doing some incredible work with that. And I've been loving watching his journey of him There's trying new stuff. stuff right and there. Yeah. Yeah. He's playing with the water droplets. Now I sent him over to Corey's, uh, Flickr page and, and, uh, he learned about how to, uh, the, the water droplets. And I'm not sure if he learned it from there, but I know that she talks all about how her rig is set up and he's been doing that. He's been playing with the crystal ball stuff. Um, which I love to do as well. So it's been a real treat to see that. And now Amber's doing this as well. And, and I just love that. You're going to be a better photographer for doing this stuff. People might look at this and think, oh, it's, you know, it's just a little model and it's silly. Well, I'll tell you what, she's learning an awful lot about composition and color and all that kind of stuff. And the number one thing we run into with any of these groups is composition and storytelling. And so she's learning that. And I think that's makes this an immediate winner in my book. So Yep. I, I like that photo too. And I'm trying to find um, where I have this. Somewhere, the listing of all the winners in the past. So I can see if she's won. I meant, to, I meant to share this with you. I'm pretty sure that we gave her a Lightroom preset pack. That's not so it. I might, be, so, might be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, what would I have called that? I've got too many things out here. <laughs> All right, so I, I, yeah, I don't want to watch me search for this thing. Let's go ahead and um, pick a winner. Where was And so what was that that popped up? Dot .NET failure. Oh, yeah. That's, I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> if you have Skype running, that, there, um, there was a certificate error earlier in their advertising. Yeah, I saw that, yep. That's nice. That's, that is great. <laughs> Way to go, guys. <laughs> Send that malware right to my Skype. It's great. Well, I, unfortunately, my antivirus was blocking all that. So yep. but it kept yep. popping up. And I was like, what is going on here? All right. So we need to pick a, we need to pick a winner. Well, if y'all want to review that while I try and find the list. Tim, do you have, since you're new, do you, do you have anybody that you'd like to um, recommend? You don't even know who's won in the past. No, I do not. So, Mike, um, uh, Shelly Sullivan's in the chat, and she said, did the winner change a uh, different photo winner on the website? What? People are checking your work, mister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she may be, I think she's right. Uh, just a uh -oh. clarification there. Yep, she's right. Spencer Sullivan won. <laughs> Let's do that photo while I look for the list. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I, I I had the when you said the winner and I pulled number, it up and I'm 11. like, that doesn't look like a spider to me. Yep, yeah, I yep. was thinking. I was like, once again, I didn't pick the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer Sullivan. Now let me and find. And I think I did Spencer's pick this name. one, so I feel better. Who, who corrected us? Who corrected me? Spencer. Uh, it would be Shelly. Oh, good. So Spencer yeah. didn't. Spencer didn't hear me. Pretend that didn't happen. Well, I don't know. Spencer might be watching it with Shelly. <laughs> Pretend that didn't so, happen. This is the winner. Spencer Sullivan. I'll put his name up again. Spencer Sullivan is the winner. Edit. <laughs> which is, hey, is a great photo. Plus, I don't have to look at that spider all month long. <laughs> I won't edit that out. I'll leave my error there. Sorry, Spencer. Yep. Okay. Um, so this is Spencer's image. 
of let me put let me I don't have his words up here. Hold on. So you living southern. in southern Utah, I get to experience some of the best night skies of the summer. I took this mm-hmm. photo on my grandmother's property in the mountains, had to pull out my self cell phone light to illuminate the barn. Wow. Um 25 second exposure, 3200 right. ISO. And to use your Rokinon uh, lens there, AD. Mm-hmm. Yep. 14 millimeter, 2.8. Yep, for sure. Yeah, it's a good shot. Exposure. I wonder how many times he had to take it to figure out 25 seconds was the right and then had to uh, use his cell phone to brighten up the barn. Yeah. I'm sure that's not one shot. This is multiple shots he took. Well, and then my my question goes into um, I love the way it's framed out. It's good good foreground, uh, obviously Milky Way. Um, I'm so burnt out. I got to be honest with you on Milky Way shots. I could never see one ever again and be perfectly happy. But um, just keep in mind important things about Milky Way shots. You cannot take a Milky Way shot in one shot. Okay, it's not possible. If you're going to print it and have a foreground that's lit up like he has here and the Milky Way itself in the same shot with one frame, you cannot do it, folks. I don't care what photographer out there tells you you can do it. If you've got a subject that's this close and you have your your lens set to infinity, which it has to be set to in order for the, sh- the actual sky to be sharp, then you're not going to have the barn in focus. You, you're, you're, that's a physics thing. <laughs> it's not going to work. So I, I love these people who post these photos and not Spencer because this is an honest photo, but I've seen uh, plenty of Milky Way shots that are composites and these guys are like, yep, one felt right out of the camera. <laughs> and it's not, it's not. And, and I don't like the fact that they lie to people and don't show them the right way to do it. It's very important to, to let people know that if you're going to have a foreground and you want it lit like Spencer has here and you want the stars to be crisp and you're going to print this because someone's going to see this. I hate to tell Spencer, someone's going to see this and they're going to come up to him and they're going to say, hey, man, I absolutely love this shot. I would like to get a 30 by 40 print of this for my wall, for my office. And Spencer is going to crap his pants at that point in time because he's not going to be able to produce that shot. If there's noise or anything, when you blow it up, you're going to see all that in the in the shot or you're going to see the blurriness. And that it looks great on the screen right now. It's a wonderful shot. But you got to be careful because I had this happen to a student of mine and, you know, she couldn't sell the shot and she lost out on a $3,500 sale wow. because she couldn't print the photo. It wasn't printable when she blew it up. And got it back. She's like, I can't give this to him. It's I can see everything now. So just be careful. If you're taking a shot like this, you're going to want to do one exposure and do it just for the barn and light it up the way he did it was great. And get that all in perfect focus. Now, it's very difficult to do at night. There's a lot of tutorials out there on how to get infinity focus and how to focus in the dark. So make sure that you, you know, pay attention to those. Um, a lot of preparation is always going to end up helping you. If you were there earlier in the day, you could set up, you could get your tripod set up. If this is your land, you could get it set up and leave it there. Then just bring the camera out. Um, you could pre-focus on the barn so you knew that it was exactly perfect. Um, and then mark your lens for infinity so that you can do the stars in the dark. That's the important thing that most people fail. You can't autofocus in the dark. It's not going to focus on the Milky Way. Um, so you need <laughs> to focus. Back. <laughs> right. You need to make sure that you know exactly where infinity focus is. So you go out during the day and you take your lens and you point at something way far away and you manually focus your lens so that it's perfectly sharp. Do some test shots. Once you have that, you put a little piece of tape across your lens and you can mark that tape. So that when you go out at night and then you slit it so that it can still – the focus ring can still turn. Then you go out at night and you know exactly where to set it. You get the flashlight out. You line the two lines up. You know you're in perfect focus. Point it at the stars and get your shot. So his settings were good. I think that the 3200 ISO is a little high. I've been able to take a 25-second 25, uh, exposure at probably more – uh, in the 1600 range and still been able to pull out the colors and everything just fine without excessive noise. Um, you know, I, if your camera performs okay, then 
uh, you know, the 70 is fine at 3,200, then go for it. You just got to be very careful of chromatic noise in the end result. So you own this land. I would highly suggest that you keep what you got here because it's it's beautifully framed. It's a nice setup. And you plan ahead to go out and get this barn in perfect focus, get that in perfect focus, and then composite that in with the beautiful Milky Way behind it, just like you have it. But make sure both of them are dead on. And then you're going to have an image that's going to sell and sell and sell sell and keep going and it's going to afford you other trips to go other places i mean utah is wonderful it's the darkest skies in the country i think right yeah out there i mean arches when we went to arches it was amazing i mean maine when we were in uh up in uh maine and we shot the milky way up there to be able to see the full milky way with your eyes to see this beautiful colors with your eyes and i know that when we were in arches we could see it as well so just you know look do the research and make sure you're taking the multiple exposures if if you're not. I can't zoom in on this to see, but I do see some chromatic noise in the barn, so I'm just assuming that it's there. Um, but I'm going to be willing if a, a one-to-one is going to expose a lot of this image, that that's what a print would do when you printed it. You're going to see all those little things. So um, just to help you prep for the future, and hopefully you'll sell because this is, a, this is an image that will sell, man. I, yep. I can tell you right now. Yep. All right. So um, thankfully, Shelly was out there and corrected me because not only is it, I don't know where she was seeing it, but not <laughs> only is it on the Facebook group, which is one of the best ways to enter the contest. It's right there at the top. I yep. should have seen that. But it's also, if you go to jpaintedraw.com, there is a link right there. Wait a minute. Photo contest Wait a winner. minute. Didn't you, didn't you do that. it? And I did both of these. Yes, I did do All both right. of these. Spencer's <laughs> name right there. The whole photo, a big, a bigger photo than what you're seeing here. Um, I linked to Spencer's Facebook page. Yeah, I did all this. It's, I guess it's just been a while. So, Mike, I think you're losing more than weight when you're doing all this walking, buddy. <laughs> and something's happening to me. So <laughs> as long as I got us here, so it, it, two good ways to enter, either through our Facebook group, which is the beginner's group, um, or the regular, which is facebook.com slash group slash Raw. And then the beginner's group has got some weird long I you know thing there. I'll show you a better way to get to it in just a second. Or through our through our website, you go to jpegderaw.com, go up the photo contest, photo contest entry, and did it click? Yeah. And then you got the links right there to enter um, right through our website, or you can come down here and here's the links to the Facebook groups to enter. You can also go over to a social link, and over here you've got all our Facebook um, links. There's the main, the main group, the beginner group. Um, we even have a sports and boudoir group. And then we got all our other social media. If you want to subscribe to this show, we have that over here in a subscribe link. Um, they got audio format, the video format for both the regular podcast we do, which is supposed to be every week. And then this show, the photo review show, which we do once a month to review the previous month's photos, that is only available in video format out here on iTunes, um, video large, video small, and on YouTube and Vimeo. And I guess it's an RSS feed too. There you go. So love to have you enter. I think this month, both groups are, um, the theme is open for both groups. If I remember right. Cool. All right, and we do have to pick a winner, and now I'm kind of leaning toward one person. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you guys have a suggestion, if we need to jump out for a second and nobody can hear us, we can do that too. Any suggestions? Um, are you, you mean uh, not a, a winner for the contest, but a winner for the Lightroom? Yes, thing? winner for the Lightroom. Well, that's uh, you were checking – on Amber, I think I, it was. I have the list, and Amber, what's her last name? Salat? Yeah, she's yeah. one. She's one it's before. It's a lot. Yeah. She's one before. Yeah. Back in January. Okay. But we're picking from the beginner group, or are we picking from the regular group? We can, pick from, either, we can pick from either group. Um, how, about we, how about we jump out for one second? Sure. Come right back. I'm gonna, All right. I'm going to leave you guys with uh, some photos. I thought I was going to leave you guys with some photos. Hold on. There we go. Quick play. Get rid of that. And all right, we're back. And we AD is going to give us two winners. 
We're going to do two winners tonight. One for beginners group, one from the regulars group. From the beginners group, we're going to do... Um, can I show her name? I'll just say her name. Kristen Lee <laughs> Anderson from the beginners group. And what you're winning, I'll get AD's website up over here. This is... Um, where am I at? There we go. There we, go. Wow. Mike, we have to do these more often. <laughs> we do. There we go. So this is nope. That's not nope. your web page. That's that's my Patreon page. We'll get to that. <laughs> Thanks though. We'll I appreciate to, the. Uh... <laughs> we're going to go to your <laughs> Patreon plug. page in a second. I don't even have your. I don't even have that pulled up. What the heck, man? Who are you? I don't bring know. Mike this back. Is, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the explorographer.com is where to go. We're going to show this Patreon page in just a second. And over here, you go to the store, then the photo tool store. And what Kristen Lee Anderson is going to win here is the premium Lightroom preset pack. Yes. I will be sending 45. you. I'll be contacting you in the next week or so with the code and how to get that. So, she is one from the, what'd you say, 45? Yeah, there's 45, 45 presets on it now. 45 presets, wow. Mm -hmm. It says 40, but you got five bonus ones there, Kristen. 45 now. All right, so Kristen Lee Anson is a winner from our beginners group, and from the regular group, we're going to do the, the sunflower image from uh, Carlos Larrera. Hopefully you say that. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think Carlos is out there in chat, but Carlos, you, I will contact you too uh, with how to get that. And if you want to go to get it yourself, again, just go to the explorographer.com, go to uh, store, and then down to photo tool store, and then you'll have a bunch of things you can get there. But while you're on JD, uh, JD AD's website, do you have a link from yep. your website over there? Mm -hmm. It's up under the learn Thing. Up under the learn. Yes, there you go. So up here under learn, there's a Patreon link. We'll click that. We'll go over to his Patreon page. Hopefully I fixed that. <laughs> <laughs> and it does work. Thecreators.com, where you get some bonus material that you can't get anywhere else except for on AD's um, uh, Patreon page here. And you can become a Patreon for, a, I think... Uh, what is the a little a, a little, dollar a dollar a month is the is the minimum? You can do yeah. more, of course, if you want. Uh, and no you, contract, and, and you get different different access out there. And you're doing what do you call in the new thing you're doing every week or so? Yeah, so I do. Um, right now, I'm doing an uh, a, a voice only, no video, uh, weekly podcast for photographers called the Weekly Fat, and it's P H A T, and it's photography talk. And essentially what I do is hit up the latest photography stories, uh, give a, like my own personal twist on it. But it's basically your, you know, water cooler talk for the week. And the Patreon folks get it a week ahead of time. And then I just release it to public. And, you know, by that time, it's not really news anymore. So you guys, without having to go to all these websites to get your news, I pick up the hottest stories and, and talk about them uh, in an audio-only podcast. And it's usually only about 15 minutes long. And the reason why I made it audio only is because we're all busy. We all have things to do. And videos are great, but videos require you to look at them, pay attention, do all this kind of stuff. Where audio, you can just play it on your phone. You can download it. Um, you can stream it. You can do whatever you want. Um, I'm streaming off SoundCloud, which has now uh, been revived, and, and SoundCloud is back uh, better than ever now. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. That's just that. We're also doing a live stream uh, coming up on October, I don't know, first Monday in October. We're bringing back live stream Mondays, which is for Patreon subscribers only. Cool. And essentially what it is is you. it's a live stream. It's going to teach you how to make – photography tutorials and how to do online live streaming if you're a photographer. So if you want to have your own show, you want to have your own podcast, that sort of thing, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the software, what kind of equipment to get. And we do it in sections. So we do a, like an hour each Monday for like four weeks or so. And, and you can join me live and ask questions and, uh, and I'll demonstrate stuff and all sorts of crazies. Apparently so, I need to watch that because I'm um Reverted back to the a, refre a refresher course. <laughs> I'm not going to go as deep as you are, Mike, because this is just a beginner thing. So we're going to be working with, you know, OBS and a microphone and a webcam. Very but nice. I am, 
I'm going to be talking about, you know, using the, the uh, stream deck and uh, talking about the new shuttle pro two um, for editing and that kind of stuff. And basically letting people what they know, what they're getting into uh, to start streaming and to start having their own production and the requirements. Cause I know a lot of people are like, I don't know how to make a tutorial for other people. I know things and mm-hmm. would like to help somebody out. So that's essentially what it's going to be. Um, we did one on backups, which you know, yep. I think um, blew up Crash Plan and made them go out of business, I guess, once they <laughs> saw saw that. I don't know what happened there. Um, and we also did one on uh, Adobe Premiere, on the basics of uh, Adobe Premiere, basically how to o- edit videos from your Mavic or your drone or your cell phone or whatever, put together a simple music video. Um, so, yeah, and, and it's Patreon-driven. So the thing that's great about Patreon is go in – you tell me what you want to learn, and that's what we work on. So we have all sorts of levels from a dollar subscriber, which basically gets all the free stuff. Uh, you get the podcast, you get the live streams, you get the events. And then up from that moves into mentorship. So like a $35 um, a month thing, uh, you get to have me for an hour a month, and we talk about your business plan, and we talk about what direction you're moving in, what we can do to kind of better your photography business, that sort of stuff. So it's all... You know, it's all kind of explained there in the sidebar, and and I'm constantly tweaking that stuff and making it better. I think the greatest thing about Patreon is, is that you can try it for 35 bucks if you want to do the mentorship. We can go through it for a month. We can focus. If it's not for you, you just stop. I mean, you don't have to – like you're not roped into it. It's not like a difficult thing. It's just right. – you know, you can be in for a month or you can be in for – you know, some of my folks have been with me for over two years now. And, and just, you know, I help them every, every day we work on stuff together and they have connections with me outside of the podcast and this kind of stuff. They, you know, they have a direct line. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, Patreon's nice because you, you haven't made a lifelong commitment, but it's a good way to, to support your photographer or whatever, whoever there's, there's more than just photographers out there on Patreon, but it's a good, a good way to support, you know, some of the people that you're you're enjoying the work that they're doing and gaining something from the work they're doing. It's a way to support them and do that. And in the case of what a lot of Patreons do and you're doing is you're getting a little bit extra too. And even with the smallest amount, uh, you get a little bit extra. You get a lot extra as you go up in a dollar amount. Yeah, and we have goal. Yeah, once we reach a certain goal, um, I'm, I give away things. So I get, awesome. you know, I I get things from affiliates and that kind of stuff. So I do have things that I can afford to give away and, and that sort of thing. So once we get to a certain level, that's uh, once, w- as we grow, people benefit from that. So cool. Or as Very I good. grow, I talk in the third person. I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, AD, thanks for coming out. Tim joined us tonight. We did a little bit of JB Raw and we also yeah. did the photo review. Thanks for coming out uh, guys. We're going to go into the post show here and, and talk a little bit about how I'm kicking town's butt. Yes, you are. All right. Until next show, next, uh, whenever we do this again, uh, keep it raw. Good night, everybody. (laughs) Good night. Good night.